Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 PS Vita review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus. It's been a long time since I got into Ninja Gaiden and I've wanted to do a review for a while but there's never really been the perfect opportunity because of how old it is. And then they come out with this. They make probably my third favourite game of all time, Portable. So make it a launch game and it makes it current so I've got the chance to finally do the review. Um, if you've never played it before, it's an amazing action adventure game. It's pretty much one of the games that made action adventure games popular again. It when it came out about eight years ago, it was truly phenomenal. It was mind blown with the combat. People slated its camera, I never had a problem with it, I thought it was great. People slated its story, I never had a problem with it, I thought it was good enough. And people praised it for everything else and I'd agree with that. Everything else is uh, amazing. Right then. You've got new game, load game at the start, uh, ninja trials and options. Um, options, you can choose your controls and they do work well on this except that I really hate it. I'll hate it, like I've hated it since I found out it was announced. I'll probably hate it until the day the Vita dies. I absolutely hate the back touch screen. I don't think it's a good control method. I truly would have preferred having an L2 and R2 button up the top there and an L3 and R3 button at the bottom there because where you hold the Vita, it probably would have been easy enough to get to them and it would have made more sense, especially for when we're going to be able to play PS3 games over remote play and things like that would. Because that's probably what they're all going to do anyway. It's just going to virtually create four buttons there, but I'd have rather had real buttons rather than a stupid, inaccurate piece of crap, quite frankly. I really do hate it. And if you're an avid fan of it, then I'm sorry, but I really do hate it. So, control setting though, you can choose your button controls and that, you can choose whether I have your projection controls touch, you can aim with the gyroscope, which does actually work, it worked in Zelda when I, Ocarina of Time when I got that and was aiming with a bow, I thought it worked on that, and I thought this works as well, and the front touch screen works great for things, it's just the back one, you can't see behind you, like, you know, behind the Vita, that's why I don't like it, it's inaccurate because of that, because it's impossible to tell where you're truly pushing on games that rely on it, a la escape plan, um, but anyway, you can choose your access for the first person cameras and things like that. Um, you can choose screen settings which is just gamma and brightness and that. But obviously you can do that on the Vita itself anyway. So there's not really much point in that being in there. I'm going to start on a ninja trial because then that way I can at least jump straight into combat. And overall there are 76 of these. Um, as far as I'm aware there's a couple more been added. But I'll be honest despite loving the game like mad. I've never really played the trials that much. Because I get bored of them. Not because they're too easy. They're in, if anything they're, some of them can be too hard. I just get bored because I'd rather be playing the story. Than just constantly fighting. I do like having breaks in the combat. I do like exploring. I do like watching the story. And the amazing cutscenes and that. So it is a, one of them things that it's personal preference. But because of that I'm not too keen on the actual missions here but you do get 76 of them so if you like them there's plenty to do and if you love the game and you've never played it before and you get into these again there's plenty to do they'll last you many many an hour because hell that probably the final ones will take you around about 100 hours each that can be that hard unless of course you are a born natural at the game um but I've, the reason i've done this is so i can jump straight into combat to be able to use things such as the nimpo so I'll just uh, push to use it there, and there we go. This is what I'm presented with. And I've got to just tap the button where it appears, and that makes me Nimpo more powerful, and then I can run into things. The only problem is, when you're first actually given the game, it's not as simple as that. It's not as simple as looking at that and thinking, oh, yeah, that's definitely what I have to do. I have to tap there, of course. Because when I first saw it, I thought, well, I'll have to do a circle. So will I do counterclockwise? So I started to rub backwards, and then it was only after a couple of tries working out, I eventually realised I had to bash the area that came up. It's just annoying that as well as having a control method that I don't think works the game didn't at any point tell me what the hell I had to do um, at least maybe it was because I jumped into these before I jumped into the game just to see what the Nimpo system was like maybe that's why maybe if you jumped straight into the campaign it does bring up and tell you either way though the other than the um, awful back screen I think everything else about this port is absolutely perfect it 
it really was one of the best games eight years ago and I still think it's one of the best games now for combat. I love you God of War style games and that and God of War and this the, they've kind of had a heated rivalry without really having it because it's been fans of both saying well actually well, this one's better this one's better and I honestly think with God of War it's got the better story but not as good a combat and the reason is because this the combat is incredibly advanced however the combat on this is advanced and locked once you start down a path of a combo you have very very little options in what you can do you have to go through and finish the combo it's not fluid at all whereas with um god of war it's on the fly it's very fluid you can swap between easy and uh, you can pretty much change between light and heavy with the, the slightest button push you can do this that and the other so that's the way i personally would see the two games um anyway into the actual campaign now which if you've never played the game before this is probably the best version to play with it if not this then the playstation version because basically this has got Rachel as a playable character. She wasn't in the original. She's there was um I can't remember how many it was. I think it might have been fourteen chapters. Proves how long ago it was when I beat the original. And then they added four or five which were just Rachel chapters to make overall nineteen chapters. That's definitely right. Uh, and Rachel just plays very similar to Ryu because uh, in the original version of it, Ryu got the Warhammer as a weapon and Rachel was the one who ended up giving him the Warhammer so anyone who played with the Warhammer a lot straight away could jump into Rachel and know the combos and it doesn't slow you down or anything, it doesn't ruin the game, it's really good. Uh, and speaking, I know I'm mumbling all over the place here going from one thing to another but speaking of the fact that you can get warmers and weapons there's all sorts of weapons in the game there's all sorts of projectiles like smoke bombs and shurikens and a glaive type thing that flies back at you there's bow and arrows and you can get explosive arrows and i think the other one was armor piercing arrows as well as the regular arrows and they work really well you can get swords you can get twin swords you can get warhammers you can get nunchucks you can get vigoran fleals which are very sharp nunchucks and they work really well they, they were one of my favorite weapons until i got the ultimate dragon sword you can get the dark you know dark massive huge blades with like 15 different blades on it and they all work well in different circumstances but it's very rare that you'll find one weapon that works all the way through the game you will be having to swap i mean there's this huge i can never remember what it's called something like an exa bigu or something this huge absolutely mammoth sword bigger than ryu himself and quite simply you're able to spin round when you use your attack with it and just take people's legs away and it's a very very good weapon for close combat when you've got a load of things jumping you but i would never ever use that weapon on a huge big boss that was very versatile and very speedy and could get out the way um I apologise as well for the gameplay footage, I know I'd never actually see it, I do gameplay, but at the moment I'm really struggling to be able to see the screen from where I am, and it's causing me to make stupid mistakes, so I do apologise for that. But uh, going back to the game though, the Nimpo I've mentioned, you've seen the one where the fireballs go around you, there's then uh, actual proper fire one where you fire a get big fireball, there's an ice one which works quite well, and then there's an electric one which just zaps everything in sight pretty much, and personally I'd mainly use the electric one, especially on the ghost fish, if you don't know what the ghost fish are, I'm not going to spoil it, just, um, well be very very careful when, uh, when you see them, because oh boy are they lethal. Anyway, I've at least managed to get higher up the mountain and somewhere where I can fight now. And again, I really do apologise, but trust me, if you could see how I'm having to do this, then you'd understand why the hell I'm making silly little mistakes all the time. But anyway, I've mentioned the weapon system. There's a couple other things I can mention. You can get items uh, that give you health like these you can get items that increase your health by you can get items that increase how many nimpo you can have you can get items that in that regenerate your nimpo because you can only hold a finite amount they're not infinite unless you play the new hero mode that they've added and the less said about that the better just basically if even on ninja dog you couldn't beat the game this is the version for you and I really did hate the Ninja Dog version, uh, it, mainly because it it always shown you, it always embarrassed you simply by putting the um, 
a pink armband on you to basically show that you weren't playing the game at a decent difficulty which uh, is quite funny for anyone who does play on that difficulty to be, sorry for anyone who doesn't play on that difficulty it's just people who do play on it um, it really is an annoying reminder I suppose thankfully the only reason I know about it is I put it on because someone told me it was uh, rather comical and as soon as I put it on I spotted it, laughed my ass off and then went back to playing it on hard. Um, I'm not a master ninja, I will never ever admit to being a master ninja or claim to be one because I'm not one, I'm relatively poor at the game, I can just about beat it on hard but that's good enough for me. Uh, other items you can get are things like golden scarabs which basically give you unlockables and the unlockables it gives you depends on what difficulty you play it on. On the original it used to give you three um, Ninja Gaiden games, the originals, and I loved that because it was the only way I could ever play them. Then they got rid of it and I hated that because it was still the only way I could ever play them. Then the Wii came out and they released the first one and not the second or the third in the European regions. So it really does still annoy me that you still can't get the original three. Surely by now on the fourth iteration... Tecmo Koi will have realised just how many people kicked off that you couldn't actually play them anymore, so surely they could have put them on, or at the very least made it a little bit of DLC. I'd have paid to get them, I'm not even bothered if they were free with a game. Anyway, I think my phone's going off, so I'll just have to make another quick cut. Thankfully though, my phone went off when I was done with the section that I was on, because I now needed to go into the menu to show you your thing, this is where your equipment is, and it's where you get all your weapons on, it's where you can go in your supplies, your accessories, because you can get armlets which increase your offense and your defense you can go into info and view your things and your technique scores because you can get new moves and combos as you go along you can um i didn't mean to do that so i apologize but i might as well mention it you can use the d-pad to cycle through your items so you can use them on the fly which is good uh, you can go onto your map is what I meant to say though before I accidentally exited out and you can go into your archives it views it shows you how many scarabs you've got it shows you how many um, yellow things you've got I can never remember what they're called but basically they're your currency and the bigger the combo you do the more powerful the move you do for example you saw us earlier on charge me weapon you can charge it with yellow ones so say you get two yellow ones fly into you you then do an ultimate combo move and a huge yellow one comes out which is worth a lot so there's a lot of strategy in Involved in playing the game and being able to afford to buy the better weapons and the um, stuff that you need and you can also unlock a few costumes as you play through but the costumes don't really do anything um, other than look cool and even then I'm pretty sure my favorite one was exclusive to black and then they removed it for Sigma because Microsoft complained which is incredibly annoying I could be wrong though, they might have put it back in this one. It, it'll be a nice surprise for us to find it if it is back in this one. But that's pretty much all I can say. Graphically it's amazing, gameplay wise it's rock hard. I've mentioned it's got 19 chapters. I'll mention it's got 33 sub-bosses and bosses in total, not of each. And the boss battles are really good. The gameplay with uh, how you do the bosses, it's never really the same with every one. There's different things that you have to do. There's bosses that people love, bosses that people hate. For example, I can't stand fighting Al because she's never easy she always kicks my butt uh, there's bosses like the first one who you actually fight who's just basically a training style boss and people used to complain that they could never get past him and I've done it on my first go um, so it's one of them I thought well the, the game's not going to be that hard and then all of a sudden I came up to the big fat guy on top of the blimp who's on stage 3 and I thought oh my god how wrong was I this game is not just only hard it's rock hard um, as well as being an action oriented game though there is a lot of exploration and things there's a lot of secret chambers to explore which will give you either new nimpo techniques or new weapons or new items or things to increase your health etc all the things I've said before so that's pretty much all I can say it's probably not been the world's best review mainly because I think I'm too nervous about doing a good review as stupid as that sounds because I absolutely love this game but all I can say is even if I haven't give it it's just cause, even if I haven't made it sound amazing, give it a go. You'll thank yourself later for trying it. It is just absolutely amazing. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion. So instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching. And if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also... If you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there. And don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.